After we have finished our model, we now have to create the sculpt map. Remind that the sculpt map is in fact a container for our 3D object, it is a simple RGB image, and it is this image that we want to transfer to Second Life. So, how can we create the image? We can do this by calling, render, bake sculpt maps. The bake control window pops up. The very first entry on the window is the color range control. So, what is this? I have already shown before that the sculpt map contains RGB color encoded location information. There are three colors. Red is for the X axis. Green is for the Y axis. And blue is for Z. Let us take a look at the object bounding box. Each color can have a value from 0, which is equal to black, up to 255, which is equal to full intensity. A value of 0 means, leftmost in X, farthest behind in Y, and the bottom in Z. Consequently a value of 255 means, rightmost in X, upfront in Y, and top in Z. We cannot change the bounding box of the object, but we can reduce the color range. In principle, this reduction of the color range scales down the visible size of the object. Note that the color range is reduced from both sides, so the geometrical object center keeps a place for all range settings. We can reduce the allowed color range for each color separately. The range settings are presented as percentage values, where 100 corresponds to the full color range. One remarkable example of using the color range settings is for creating tiny objects. More on this in a moment. For now we keep the color range at 100% for all colors. Directly below the color range parameters, you find the list of currently selected sculpted prints. This list contains only one item for now, namely our model. And at the bottom of the window we find two checkboxes, Reset Origin, and Rename Maps. First, let's take care about Reset Origin. The origin of your object is not necessarily located in the geometric center. It can be located anywhere in 3D space, but for most objects the location of the origin does not matter. On the other hand, for Pringstar it is best when the origin is located at the geometric center of the object. And this is exactly what Pringstar is by default when the checkmark is enabled. It moves the origin to the geometric center before it calculates the scalp map. However, there are situations where you explicitly want the object center to be far away from the geometric center. For example, when you create a swinging door, where you want the pivot to be located at the side of the object instead of the center. We keep with the default settings for now. The last option is, Rename Maps. Assume for a moment you did not give your object a reasonable name when you created it. Then at some point later you decided to rename the object but you did not care to rename the scalp map. Here you have the option to automatically correct the naming. If this option is enabled, then Primstar will ensure that the sculpt map will get the exact same name as the object. So, let the baker do its job. And here it is. The sculpt map is created. Now you only need to export the map as PNG or TGA image. Finally import the image to Second Life, and do never forget to enable lossless compression, otherwise you will get nasty distortions. Let us examine the model, and see what changed after baking the scalp map. First, you notice that the object origin has been moved to the object center. Well, Prim started that because we have enabled Reset Origin. So if you do not want this to happen, you might want to disable the check mark. Now take a look at the scalp map. Primstar changed its name equal to the object name. That is what happens because we check rename objects. And most apparently it has changed from an all over black image to a colorful image. And this is a good indicator that everything just went fine. Let me point you to yet another very important detail, namely the object size. 
you may know that the smallest possible size of an object in second life is one centimeter along X, Y, and Z. However with sculpted prims we can create tiny objects down to a size of about 16 microns along the axis, and in principle we can do this by reducing the color range. But there is a much easier way to get tiny sculptures. Primstar uses the object size of the object in Blender, and it furthermore assumes that one Blender unit equals one second light meter. In the scene settings, we can set the unit display to metric. So we can immediately see that you actually do not have to do anything besides modeling and just take care about Blender units. As soon as the bounding box size of an object gets smaller than 1 cm along one or more axes, Primstar will reduce the color range to preserve the object size. Here is an extremely small object. You can see that the colors on the scalp map get much lighter in the case. This is a very good indicator that the color range reduction was active during baking. I have to mention yet another interesting detail. The sculptmap provides an alpha channel. Let us make the alpha channel visible. Now we see that the alpha channel contains an outline of the object. This is the default setting for Primstar. And this has two reasons. First, it provides a visual representation of the sculptmap content. Second, it makes it much more complicated to copy your sculptmap from the screen when it gets displayed in the second light viewer. I will show you more about this in a minute. Now we got a sculptmap, but remind what we learned in the previous chapters, the object data in the sculptmap is not necessarily equal to the original model. So, in order to check this, we need a method to import the sculptmap back into Blender. We can do this in two ways. And here is the quick method. Primstar has a nice option for a quick check of your scout map. You find it in the UV image editor. There you can call, image, import a scout -y. This will create an object from the current image, and places it at the current cursor location. Let us make a comparison. Apparently the re-imported object does not maintain the material assignments. So we need to assign the material by hand. When we go to edit mode, we see that the new object has got many more faces compared to the model. If you have watched the previous chapters of this video series, then you might already have an idea why this happens. Well, here is the explanation. The new object does not have a subdivision modifier, while the original object uses one. So, during baking of the scalp map, Primstar has silently applied the modifier before it calculated the scalp map. Consequently, all subdivided surfaces have been generated, and now they show up again. Please note that we use the subdivision modifier only during modeling. It allows us to use only 64 faces in edit mode, while the final object comes along with four times more faces per subdivision level. And since we do not have subdivision modifiers in Second Life, we have to apply the modifier when we want the faces to show up after import. Let us again get back to the export. When you simply export the image like I have shown before, then you will get a sculpt map with an alpha channel. You may not want this to happen. Either you don't want the alpha channel at all, or maybe you want a fully transparent sculpt map instead. Primstar supports an alternative export method. This method has not yet been fully implemented, but one function is already available. Let me show you what it can do for you. I assume that you have already baked your scout map. Select your model in object mode. Now call, file, export, LLSD primitives. A file selector box opens. Here select an export directory. And please make sure that you really select a directory and do not enter a file name here, otherwise you will get unexpected results. Scroll down to the export parameter panel on the left side. There, open the alpha parameter. You can select following options. 
Clear gives you a fully transparent sculpt map. Solid makes the image completely intransparent. And Preview creates the outline as I have shown you before. Now click the button, Export LSD Primitives. When the export is completed you find your sculpt map in the specified export directory. Note that this export function also supports the export of multiple sculptees at once. Primstar also searches for texture maps assigned to the objects, and exports all assigned textures. You also will find an XML file in the export folder. Please ignore this file for now, it does not yet contain any valuable information. So far, we have discussed the export of Sculpt Maps, but sometimes you also may want to import your work, and Primstar provides two alternatives for this task. The easy way is to use the UV image editor to open the sculpt map as an image. And then use image import as sculpty. The other option is to use the file importer. Open file import sculpty. Now select your sculpt map from the file selector box. The model will be created just like with the image editor, so for a default sculpty we get 32 faces in new, and 32 faces in V. But you also get an operator panel with a rich set of options. Actually your sculpt map is treated exactly like the primitive UV shapes, hence you can change all aspects of the shape, like, for example, change the number of faces, add subdivision levels, change the face density distribution, and so forth. However, you must know that your settings may have an influence on the object shape. So, this was my introduction to Primstar 2. Please let me know if you found any issues with my presentation, like missing details or badly explained sections. If you have more questions please check out the Machini Matrix website, and consider to also join the instant message group, Blender Primstar Jess, in Second Life. Have a nice day!